Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Demon Souls. We are going through the start of my favorite world in the game, World 5, the Valley of Defilement. This putrid fissure running through the earth. It's one I really can't wait to get a more proper look at. Uh, by the way, something cool to note about these filters that you access uh, through photo mode is that you can actually set them to persist in-game. This winter one looks really nice, actually. That's pretty. Uh, and there's even this, a classic filter that better replicates, um, albeit not perfectly, the color grading and the values of the original. I'm not going to leave it like this. I just want to show it for a little bit. Oh, I love all these... These little bits where you could see the light pouring through a canopy. Get a nice look at those god rays. I uh, I don't like how this looks in classic, honestly. Because I think something about the Valley of Defilement's charm in the original was in how lo-fi everything was. It really let your imagination fill in a lot of the blanks, so that same color grading doesn't necessarily work here. So usually what you might do is you would go to World 1-2, maybe 2-1, as your second level. The Valley of Defilement is a pretty big step up in difficulty if you come here straight away. Some ambushes are more dangerous here, some enemies can deal most of your HP in one combo. There are some really dangerous status effects going on. Uh, plus, it's really dark and it's mostly vertical, so it's really easy to fall to your death here. And there are enemies that have those fire enchanted stabs. Or halberds, whatever they are. Some kind of polearm? I think, no, those are just flaming sticks. I'm giving them too much credit. Uh, yeah, they're just gonna poke at you with some flaming sticks. And we don't have a shield that even blocks full physical damage yet, let alone will it take any significant sting out of fire attacks. So they hurt. So what I like to do is I like to play footsies with them. I like to bait an attack out, back off a little bit, then go in. So the thing about this level is you have to be really careful, really observant, and really alert. That's part of why I really like the, vo the Valley of Defilement. Uh, and it gets us close to 5-2, which has something that I want. By the way, that ladder leads to the spot that we dropped off on to get to that bridge we kicked over. Uh, and instead of continuing on that main pathway, we're actually going to take a much more interesting path around. There are a lot of points in this level where you can go off the beaten path and actually find uh, a way safer or more strategically advantageous route. Which is another reason why I love this level so much. Because in terms of design, I'm always a fan of really vertically oriented levels in 3D games. I find them extra satisfying, and it just feels like extra creativity and care goes into them. Uh, let's check out that Ring of Magical Dullness. Soft ring bearing a light green seal, raises magic defense at the expense of magic power. Crafted by Gary, known for his magic handicrafts and close acquaintance with Sage Frake the Visionary. The seal depicts a man facing right. Uh, we might as well throw this on. I don't have too many good rings yet, and there's really no reason to be wearing the cling ring when we are in body form. Uh, so now we're going to be making a couple more drops of 
few that are more dangerous than the one we just made. Uh, this one, because we're wearing the Thief Ring, it actually allows us uh, a degree of stealth. Be careful when you trample over some of the planks on this roof here because they'll collapse. And not only are there two of those enemies wielding flaming sticks, there are also two others wandering around ready to ambush you by the ladder. So let's do something pretty cool. Let's see if we can scope out the area and scout out a better way to go down with photo mode. I love that that is, like, there's a new tactical element added to the game. Uh, and we can see there's this little plank jutting out. Which means you don't have to fall for the ambush going down the ladder. You don't have to fall into either of the holes and get immediately attacked. You don't have to fall down through the roof and get pincered by four enemies. It's by far the safest way to go through that. And we aren't even done with that. I'm going to continue down just a little bit to pick up a few things and then we're going to backtrack. So already we're seeing so many reasons why I like this level. It really pushes you to think strategically about your environment. Plus, it's got this... What the fuck? Okay. Um? Rude, first of all. Oh my god, I swear to god with Comcast. I don't know this is Comcast's fault, but deep in my heart, I know this is Comcast's fault. Whatever, that was pretty painless. Oh, God, I love these loading times. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, SSDs are great. <laughs> oh, man. Remember the days of pre-patch Bloodborne? Bloodborne on launch day? Do you remember how long those load times were? It was a hot minute to go from place to place. <sighs> oh, by the way, the main thing that you want to know about these ticks with these pulsating pustules, uh, the main thing you want to know about them is that you do not ever have to interact with them in any way beyond rolling. They put that one uh, uh, plagued enemy there to draw your attention and try to make you strike them. That'll get you poisoned. You there. Won't you please buy something? My poor child is hungry. You don't deserve to die. So let me give you some advice. This place buzzes with pests fattened on a diet of souls. You could do worse than keep some lotuses for protection. The price of survival can never be too high, can it? How many years has it been? Since that witch Astraea came to this valley with that squid-headed knight. Those ridiculous white robes of hers. I swear I caught her glaring at my son in disgust. Yes, it's true. She's as nasty as they come. And she's a demon to boot. Not that it surprises me. You could do worse than keep some of the price of survival. Okay, not too much else to say from her. But she does sell some useful stuff like this. Widow's Lotus, Counteracts, Plague. Uh, she's also one of the only NPCs who, uh, who sells Black Pine Resin and Rotten Arrows, uh, which are just arrows that inflict poison. Let me double check something. Curses. I wasted my breath on you. Did that witch send you to torment me? Before I walk away from her, I want to make sure I have a couple of Widow's Lotuses on hand. Okay, that's more than enough. There's a reason I'm going to want those. Don't go too deep into this level without at least one. You will have a bad, bad time. Um, oh, speaking of statuses, the reason Phalanx uh, took a damage over time and died to that... 
was because I inflicted bleed on him, which I didn't even realize. Uh, that is apparently now a property of all curved swords. I don't remember that being the case before, but who knows? Uh, let's check these saints items that I just got out. White attire worn by the highest ranking saints on pilgrimage pilgrimages of proselytization and salvation. Surprisingly tough owing to their multiple layers. So the useful thing, the utility of the saint set is that it's got pretty decent poison and bleed resistance. No plague resistance. Which is handy to keep in mind. Still, the poison resistance is pretty useful here. That's the most common status effect in the Valley of Defilement. As you might guess. Um, so, in terms of statuses that are just damage over times, uh, dots, there is bleed, poison, and then plague. And this, by the way, is where we dropped earlier to avoid that ambush. Now we're just dropping down even further to open up a new route to us. Uh, so there are vanishingly few instances of plague in the game. It's just a stronger version of poison, but it's a it's a much stronger version of poison. Uh, and when they do come up, it can get really dicey. And there is a way to get afflicted by the plague in this level. And it's coming up. Oh, oh! Whoa. Oh my god, that got way scarier than it should have. Ooh. It's still not not scary. Uh, yeah, Soldier's Lotuses are for Bleed, Noble's Lotuses are for Poison, and Widow's Lotus is for Play. And this is also a useful item. Uh, to counteract poison, albeit in a less direct way. Uh, so this mace is blessed. Blessed is one of the upgrade paths that significantly modifies a weapon beyond just adding raw physical damage to it. Uh, and this upgrade path corresponds to faint stones, uh, and I think we picked a few of those up. So Blessed Weapons do not scale well with Strength or Dexterity, but they do add scaling with your Faith stat. Uh, and it adds magic damage to the weapon. Most importantly, I think, it, you also get HP regeneration per second that increases the more, the more you upgrade it. It starts at 2 HP a second, which is pretty decent for negating some chip damage, and it only gets better from there. It's also nice that they give this to you in a level that's heavy on poison and leeches and tiny little mm, rats. Rats who inflict the plague. Because of course they do. That makes sense. Uh, I have to unlock my hammer and... Because oh, it's hard to judge the distance. And the mace has a really good attack set against the, the rats, but it has shit for range. So, that gets spooky. The rats in this are very spooky. Do not mess around with the rats. You saw how quick that uh, plague chipped away at me. And hey, look at that. After knocking down that bridge shortcut, we have now looped all the way back around to the filthy woman. Not to denigrate her, that's just what she's called. <laughs> she's a bit rude, but given her circumstances, that's pretty understandable. Has some interesting things to say about Astraya that do not go with the conventional wisdom of her being this super compassionate saint this Mother Teresa figure. Although, I guess that might fit in better with Mother Teresa than I than I first thought. There's sort of a dark underbelly to the to um 
Mother Teresa is there not? Or at least a reputation of one? Okay, the giant depraved one is out of the way. Again, another reason why the thief's ring rules is because it's much harder to draw him out without all of these friends joining the party. When you can fight giant depraved ones one-on-one, -on -one, they're not bad at all, especially if you can get them into this room or the room on the other side of that cliff. But you have to set that situation up. There are some conditions attached to that fight not being that hard. So it's just about being prepared. So we're through some of the biggest menaces, some of the biggest fall hazards, um, one of the most dangerous enemies in the level. The rats? The rats who are a menace? Uh, we are just about at the boss. In fact, we are three enemies off. Make that two, make that one. You can see in the back, there is another giant depraved one. Uh, this one takes a little bit more coaxing to get him where I want him, but we'll get him. It will get him there nonetheless. Like I said, either this room or the one on the other side of that cliff side. Either one of those makes for a fine arena to fight these things in. They're really slow. They're lumbering. They wind up a ton of, on their hits, so they're really predictable. You can get behind them no problem. You just need room. You just need surface area to fight them. And then we can just cross this bridge and enjoy our scenic view of the... Oh. Uh, of the flowing putrelage and the fungal blooms. If you look ahead on your right, you'll even see some wriggling leeches. There they are. Attaching themselves to the walls. Damn, that's some good leech texture. <laughs> it's just a horror show down here. And then, I've never really looked at- holy hell. It just grows more depraved and grotesque the further down you go. Shit, Leechmonger looks great in the remake! Oh, he might benefit more than any other boss from the remake, <laughs> from being two console generations removed from when this came out. Oh, it reminds me of a Plague Tale Innocence, all of the individual rat movements, the way they writhed together. Uh, so Leechmonger is traditionally a pretty easy boss, unless you come here as your second level. Uh, and then he can at least put up a little bit of a fight, much like Pinwheel. If you do Pinwheel early enough in Dark Souls, he can still give you a, ch a bit of a challenge. Oh, and I always misjudge his tells, and I wasn't looking at his health bar. Uh, and then that's the main problem with him, is that attack where he, he launches balls of leeches at you that attach themselves and drain your HP over time. I'm going to re-up my fire buff, even if it means him healing a little bit. This is just more, this is going to be way more damage efficient in the long run. Because Leechmonger is super, super weak to fire. Also because I rarely ever go this route and fight him this early, I know none of his tells. Oh, and by the way, don't get used to uh, to this this luxury that we get. 
of being able to roll through waist-deep filth. Uh, that is not a luxury we're going to get as we move deeper into the Valley of Defilement. As we move deeper into the prototype for Blight Town. Uh, so really quick, we're going to go around and pick up all the Sucker Stones and Crescent Grass. Sucker Stones are for a different upgrade path. We'll get into a little bit later. And, oh, I can't wait to get into the, into the lore of this place, too. I haven't gotten to talk about that at all this episode. And that's one of my favorite things about the Valley of Defilement. The lore and the narrative of this place. But I hope that little taste of it has got you asking some questions and already putting some dots together. Uh, and we will be back for 5-2 not too long from now. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.